guys, ciao a tutti. Welcome back to Venite a Mangiare. I'm Allegra, registered dietitian nutritionist, and today I'm going to be sharing my recipe for Zuppa Toscana. If you've never heard of Zuppa Toscana, you may also know it as sausage and kale soup. To be honest, this wasn't something that my family ate a lot of when I was younger. My family originally comes from the south of Italy, where the cuisine is a little bit different from the foods that are typically eaten in the Tuscany region of Italy. I actually hadn't even tried Zuppa Toscana until around four years ago. I remember I was home from college for a weekend, and it was a super rainy night and my mom decided to make it for dinner one night. A few months later, I was feeling a little bit under the weather and I wanted to make some soup, so I decided to come up with a recipe for Zuppa Toscana, and that is the recipe that I'll be sharing today. So I actually had to do a little bit of research to find more about the origin of Zuppa Toscana. In Italian, Zuppa Toscana translates to Tuscan soup. From my research, I gathered that Zuppa Toscana is a broad term for a soup that is made from ingredients that are typically found in the Tuscany region of Italy. So things like potatoes, celery, beans, carrots, and hearty meats like Italian sausage. Here in the US, Zuppa Toscana was popularized by the restaurant chain Olive Garden. In the Olive Garden version, they add heavy cream, bacon, and garlic. It's more of a richer soup compared to the authentic Italian version. This recipe is great because you can have a super delicious soup ready in less than 30 minutes, and I created it so that you only need to use one pot to put this recipe together. Overall, there seems to be a lot of different variations of Zuppa Toscana out there, so I'm going to add one more to the mix with this recipe. To make this recipe, you will need one tablespoon of olive oil, one pound of Italian turkey sausage, one small yellow onion diced, two large carrots diced, two to three celery stalks diced, 64 ounces of low sodium vegetable or chicken broth, two cans of northern beans, one bunch of kale, distemmed and chopped. I just use my hands for this, but you can also use a knife, whatever works for you. And your spices to taste. In a large soup pot, heat olive oil over low heat. Add onions, carrots, and celery to the pot to create a mirepoix. Cook the veggies for five to 10 minutes or until the veggies are tender. Add sausage and cook until brown. Stir occasionally to break sausage into smaller pieces. Add broth, beans, and kale. Add water as needed and spices and stir. Bring to a boil. Once it reaches a boil, lower heat to a simmer and cook for another 15 minutes. Serve with grated Parmesan and toasted bread if desired. Okay, before we dive into this dish, let's talk nutrition. We use turkey sausage instead of pork sausage in this recipe. I'm not gonna go too in depth on how turkey sausage is made because I'm sure it's pretty obvious and I think I can probably spare you the details. But I will share some information on the nutrition of turkey sausage. Compared to pork sausage, turkey sausage has around half the amount of fat. Now, having pork sausage every once in a while isn't going to kill you. Both pork sausage and turkey sausage contain saturated fat. Saturated fat is the main fat found in animal products such as red meat, whole milk, and butter. And until recently, it was hypothesized and generally accepted that saturated fat led to an increased risk of heart disease. However, many recent studies have actually debunked this myth and suggest that one, reducing your saturated fat intake doesn't reduce your risk of heart disease. Two, that replacing your saturated fat intake with more refined carbohydrates does seem to increase your risk of heart disease. And three, replacing high saturated fat intake with more polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acids does seem to decrease your risk of heart disease. 
It should be noted, however, that these results reflect the general population and may not be applicable to people with medical conditions or high cholesterol. Although there's a lot of research out there, everyone seems to agree that eating more polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fatty acids does seem to have a positive impact on reducing your risk of heart disease. Hey guys, I wanted to pop on here really quick because I don't think I did a super great job of explaining the research that I cited, and I was afraid that if I just left the video as it is, that um, a lot of people could misinterpret what I was trying to say. So there is a lot of information out there, and the research on saturated fat and whether or not it's good for our health um, isn't super clear. So this is honestly, saturated fat is one of the most controversial topics within nutrition. Uh, many believe that saturated fat can cause negative health outcomes where others believe that it's really not as bad as we once thought it was and it can be a part of a healthy diet. So honestly, I think this topic could use an entire separate video, um, but for now, I'll leave it at this. What makes this topic so confusing is that saturated fat intake has been associated with increasing heart disease risk factors such as LDL cholesterol, um, an apolipoprotein B, and greater levels of those markers have been associated with a greater risk of heart disease. However, the studies that I previously cited suggest that consumption of saturated fat, um, it didn't have any significant link to actually heart disease itself. So um, the research also failed to um, suggest there was any sort of association between saturated fat consumption and um, all-cause mortality or stroke risk. So what does this mean about saturated fat? So saturated fat isn't necessarily good or bad. It's kind of in the middle and it largely depends on the type of food that you're eating that contains saturated fat. So for example, foods that contain saturated fat such as like fried foods or highly processed meats, those will have a different impact on your health compared to foods such as coconut and grass-fed beef and full-fat dairy, which also contain saturated fat. As a dietitian, I would recommend not necessarily focusing on avoiding or eliminating saturated fat, um, but rather trying to increase consumption of heart-healthy polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fats, um, as well as whole grains and fruits and vegetables. Um, and then when you do opt for saturated fat, um, really trying to go for more um, grass-fed meats or poultry, such as the turkey sausage that we used in this recipe. Okay, end rant. Let's talk about kale. <laughs> I'm sure almost everyone out there knows kale to be this super nutritious vegetable. And you're absolutely 100% not wrong. Kale is one of the most nutritionally dense superfoods out there. I feel like kale kind of gets a little bit of a bad rep because, let's be honest, raw, plain kale can sometimes be not so tasty. But when it's prepared well and it's incorporated into some of your favorite foods, it can be a great way to get a ton of nutrients. Kale comes from the cabbage family. It's a cruciferous vegetable similar to broccoli, bok choy, arugula, brussels sprouts, etc. Kale is grown primarily in the fall and winter because the cold helps to improve the flavor and crispness of the vegetable, which may be why this recipe tastes so good when it's colder outside. There are many different variations of kale out there. Typically, the type of food you're making depends on what type of kale you use. The most common type, at least here in the U.S., is curly kale. This type of kale can be softened and used in salads, it can be sautéed or put into stews and soups, or it can be used in smoothies. The different types have different textures and flavors which may make one type better for certain dishes. Nutrition-wise, there really isn't one type of kale that's better than the other. Like I said before, kale is full of tons of nutrients. It is especially high in vitamins A, C, and K. In one cup of raw kale, you can find around 200% of the daily value percentage of vitamin A, 130% of the daily value percentage of vitamin C, and 685% of the daily value percentage of vitamin K. Not to mention it's also a great source of important minerals such as manganese, calcium, and potassium, and it's full of antioxidants. 
So yes, kale deserves all of the hype it gets related to its nutrient profile. With all the nutrients found in kale, it can help to support bone health, help with blood clotting, reduce your blood pressure, and may help to decrease your risk of certain chronic diseases. Overall, kale can be a really great veggie to add to your meal to support your overall health. Okay, the soup is ready, so come eat. Venite a mangiare! Okay, take two. Was not trying to kill me? Amazing. <laughs> So much for watching this video i really appreciate it this is just a reminder that this video is made for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice you should always consult your doctor if you have any questions about your health status if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up below and if you're not already subscribed to my channel be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell next to it to get notifications for every time i post a video there will be new videos every thursday thanks again for watching